And it, a last example is that of the surface of the mirror. A mirror allows angry faces, smiling faces to, to, sh to arise in it, but they don't penetrate, they don't belong to the mirror. So there is this quality. So that's the reasoning, the basis for, uh, mental tr for mind training. And that's also why That's also the basis for uh, speaking of original goodness in Buddhism. So again, it's not a pessimistic way. So original goodness doesn't mean we are all nice and good. It just means that goodness in the sense of un, unadulterated or like a pristine original quality of pure consciousness. So that means also we can change things. Transforming oneself is possible and is desirable. So now how those are the methods? Everything needs a method. So somebody said meditation is doing nothing with method. I mean, you don't go around and do all kinds of things, build houses and things, but you are really deeply changing the way you will then do everything in the world. So there are many of those methods. Maybe there's not the time here to go extensively through those. Of course, we won't have the opportunity to do so, but just to give you examples of kinds of methods that can be used for transforming oneself, again with the compassionate aim of transforming the world. Like antidotes is the most obvious one. You cannot, uh, at the same, in the same gesture, stretch a hand and shake someone's hand friendly way and give a blow. So love-hate relationship is, is not love and hate at the same time. It's just sometimes love, sometimes hate. And uh, you go back, even it goes the problem comes when you alternate every second. But in fact, it's never, you, at the same moment, at the same time, same object, in the same thought, you, you cannot wish to harm and wish to do good. Those are like heat and cold. So, it's almost so simple. If you cultivate, not just flash of, 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 uh, of altruism, but if you cultivate again and again, Bring to your mind this loving kindness and compassion, the wish, benevolence. Then in all those moments where you brought benevolence in your mind or loving kindness or altruistic love, all those moments there's no space in your mental sort of landscape for hatred, the wish to harm. Simply we don't cultivate the mind. We just go from one to the other and it's sort of without any control. We are the, the toy of, or the, the, of all the toys that take us here and there. So now if we willingly cultivate a loving kindness for a while, like for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that's maybe our daily meditation, or if you have a time to do it more for, from time to time to get more familiar with that, that's meditation again, and something that will become more used to. It become more natural. It's like when you learn something at the beginning, it's quite difficult. You know, remember when you first try to get on the bicycle. It was so sort of scary and unstable. And someone who knows now he can lift his hands and whistle and almost not having to think about it. So that's what becomes something that becomes a natural process. You get in the flow of it. But this needs an acquired experience. So, to each of those mental toxins, there are related antidotes. You know, what is jealousy? Actually, among all those negative emotions, if you think about jealousy, it's, it's the most silly one. <laughs> because suppose, as a basic good human being, you want people to be happy. And you decide, on top of that, you want to be a bodhisattva, you're going to work for their happiness. Now, someone is already happy, so that's much less to do. <laughs> so let it be, instead of being upset. You know, that person has this success, that quality that I don't have is rich, I'm not. Okay, fine. You wanted to provide him all these things, he got it, then please rejoice from your heart. And you are always jealous of people's happiness, not of their suffering, isn't it? <laughs> so that's completely wrong. I mean, uh, doesn't, it's dysfunctional, obviously. 
And also you are so miserable and doesn't remove anything of those people enjoying whatever quality they have. So it's, you are totally the loser. <laughs> anyway, so now what is the opposite precisely? Is to quality of rejoice. Oh, that person has this quality. Wonderful. Maybe it's also inspiration. Maybe if I work hard, I can do something like that. And then what is the opposite or the antidote of obsessive desire? Obsessive desire doesn't give you a moment of freedom. So inner freedom. No, I'm, I don't have to follow every of those thoughts of obsession and this chain reaction. So freedom, no sort of strings pulling you to this object of obsession. Likewise, uh, contentment against greed and avidity, that's just those are incompatible. You cannot be content with just what you have. If you, while having one, you want two, having two, you want four, having the whole herd, then you stop there. So there's no contentment in that. So that requires, of course, identifying one to one almost uh, an antidote for each negative emotion. But there are other ways to do so. Maybe more basic way or fundamental way. It has to do with the very mechanism of, of, of afflictive emotions. What usually an affective emotion does, it sort of keeps you going to the trigger, the object that, that started that emotion. For instance, if you are very discontent with someone who has been nasty to you, the person is there, you know, always sort of your mind and your eyes are going to that person, and each time you know, it triggers again that strong emotions. If the person is not there, even emotion is not pleasant, again comes in your mind. And again the emotion comes. You are pressing a button each time you think and then it sort of blows up. So now how to stop that vicious circle of self-perpetuating? No, instead of forget about the object for a while, you look at emotion. And, and don't be one with the emotion. Like sometimes when we are very angry, and again anger here doesn't mean indignation. Uh, facing an injustice, a massacre or something. Indignation is the strong wish that this is intolerable, I must do whatever is needed to, to, to remedy that. Anger in the sense of irritation, malevolence, wanting to harm, to take revenge, and just blowing up all the fuse for that. So, now, usually we associate, you are angry, and nothing can sort of somehow makes you feel that it's not justified. But instead of that, we just dissociate and look at it, instead of thinking of that nasty person. You look at it, and what happens then? By looking at it without letting the fuel come in again, then that emotion cannot sustain itself on its own. It's bound to die out just like a fire running out of wood, just like morning frost under the rising sun. If you look at it, it melts away. And if you think of that process, it avoids two sort of traps or extreme. One is to blow the fuse. And well, people say sometimes it's good to express your anger. And some years ago, there was even some therapy. You would pay a few dollars to break pianos. <laughs> Just feel good. Instead of punching the, your neighbor or you, someone explained that method years ago to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. He said you could bang your head against a wall when you really, or against a pillow. And His Holiness was very practical, thought for a second and said, I, I'd rather choose the pillow. <laughs> so, it doesn't work. Both psychological studies and, of course, contemplative Know that if you do that, what you get is an angry temperament. When you increase your tendency to anger, you lower the threshold above which you get angry, so you get easier, easily angry, and more often. Now, the other way is to try to, the other extreme, which is also no good, is to suppress that anger, like put it in a tightly closed compartment, a time bomb, and leave it somewhere in your mind. Of course, that's, that's, that's not healthy. Neither is healthy. You know, blowing the fuse is, doesn't work. Keeping it is not, intact is not work. But now this, this other process, letting vanish, that's fine. You, you, it's no more there. You didn't repress it. You didn't blow it. 
it's gone. 